So Mati, Bitcoin growth has been slowing down lately and uh, prominent uh, trader Peter Brandt expressed some concern that if uh, current parabolic phase is violated, we could expect either an 80% correction of seven months advance or a smaller correction with definition of new parabola. What do you think about this analysis? Do you agree? So first of all, I disagree with the premise. I don't think that it's been slowing down. I think that it's been kind of, well, we could say that crypto has been cooling off. I mean, we saw some massive gains this year so far. Um, and we could take a look at the uh, rising trend line since April 2nd. We had that big pop on April 2nd. Uh, and this is basically uh, a very, very steep incline. Um, so the fact that it's been kind of consolidating lately, this basically uh, shows that it's taking those massive gains and kind of uh, etching them into uh, the actual uh, the actual value of the currency. Um, this morning, uh, I tweeted out a nice triangle formation that was uh, coming, uh, where we could see it was coming to a head around eleven thousand three hundred. Um, about an hour after I tweeted this, though, we did see a breakout to the upside, but that's really on the short term. Um, Overall, what I think that uh, Peter was trying to do was give us kind of just a worst case scenario. Uh, and I know I'm pretty familiar with Peter Brandt's uh, analysis and his trading style. And what he always likes to stress is the asymmetric risk that, it, that lies in cryptocurrency. So meaning that you have 100% risk on the downside. And on the upside, if we do see a parabolic rise, um, you know, you could see Bitcoin going to $50,000, $100,000 or even more. So a lot more than uh, 100%. Um, that's, that's, a good, that's, that's a very good risk to reward scenario uh, for high risk investors. So I would like to ask you now about the Deutsche Bank latest decision to shrink its investment bank operation. This decision led to a cut of 18,000 jobs. So why do you think Deutsche Bank took this decision and what do you think is going to be the impact on the crypto world? What happened with Deutsche Bank in my mind is uh, that they've basically cut off their, the investment arm and the trading, most of the trading desks at Deutsche Bank. Um, and those trading desks have been largely unprofitable over the last few years. We have to realize that we're right now in a unique situation that we've never seen in history as far as the global economy where central banks around the world have kept interest rates artificially low. Uh, most, many of them at zero, some of them even below zero. So what happens is that um, the bond market uh, has basically taken all of the yields and dropped them to the floor following the central bank. So right now, an investor who sees you know, a 2% opportunity over the course of a year, they're just getting hungry over that. And in my mind, this is basically um, it means that there isn't a lot of meat on the bones as far as global investments are concerned. So, uh, you know, an investment bank like Deutsche Bank, usually they make their money, uh, you know, off of those yields. They make their money uh, off of, you know, lending money. Uh, and if they can get, you know, 5% or 6%, they're doing great. But the global environment just doesn't allow, allow for that because you have central banks um, who are buying bonds that have even negative, uh, negative yielding interest. So uh, what it basically means is that, um, you know, following the financial crisis, uh, you know, we've been in kind of an emergency mode. And we talked about, uh, or the central banks were talking about exiting that uh, emergency mode. But since the start of 2019, they're actually going in deeper, providing more and more liquidity into the market, which is pushing down yields further and further and further. So in that environment, it's very difficult for any investment bank to really make money because that's where they make their money from. So talking about uh, crypto exchanges, uh, lately major crypto exchanges uh, like uh, Huobi and uh, Arisex uh, are, have been implementing uh, high frequency trading, which is a type of trading that allow clients to trade at uh, a much higher speed than regular clients. So can you actually expand a little bit on the advantages of high, um, of high frequency trading and uh, maybe tell us what you think about the future of this practice in the crypto trading world? Yeah, it's an interesting progression, no doubt. I mean, high frequency trading has been available uh, in traditional markets for a very long time. 
Um, it's it's a partic particular advantage for uh, algo trading and robot trading. Um, it'd be interesting also to understand how exactly they offset that. Obviously, um, it's not going to be really possible to have a high frequency trade in Bitcoin that's settled in real time because we know that Bitcoin is not settled, uh, you know, quite that quickly. You know, a Bitcoin transaction can take. Uh, you know, 10 minutes, an hour, sometimes two hours, depending on the fee that you allocate. Whereas high frequency trading, we're usually talking about milliseconds. So very likely those uh, brokers will need to take some of the exposure uh, onto their book. But what it shows is that the market is now mature enough where those brokers can come in and do that, uh, acting as a market maker uh, for those high frequency traders. So um, in general, I think that it's a very good sign uh, that the market is more stable now. Um, and I believe that having that option will also bring more stability to price because uh, robo, you know, robots and algos, uh, they're generally getting price feeds from several different locations. So now that they can act on those arbitrage opportunities uh, a little bit quicker or even much quicker in some cases, they basically uh, take out the arbitrage opportunities, which means that the price across all brokers should remain more stable going forward. So you pointed out that peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading has spiked, reaching a level which you haven't seen since last November. So what do you think is the significance of this indicator? Yeah, so uh, Local Bitcoins is a website where uh, people can trade Bitcoin uh, with each other, so peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, this website is CoinDance, which basically tracks the volumes that are happening on Local Bitcoins. Uh, and you can see this little spike uh, over here, which brought us up to 65 uh, 0.6 million dollars within a week. Um, this is the largest uh, volume that we've seen uh, since since November. Um, and basically, uh, and we have to also remember that local bitcoins uh, recently reduced some of the options uh, for you know let's say peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading versus fiat money um, and stuff like and or or cash uh, cash trading. Uh, they've reduced their options in Iran, I believe. Um, so it's interesting to see that their volumes have been increasing pretty gradually uh, since the start of the year. Um, but what's most interesting to me about this chart uh, is that we can see the overall level since 2017. So if we take a look around here, this is where uh, Bitcoin volumes first surpassed $50 million per week. Uh, that's in, in September of 2017. And as you can see very clearly, uh, it hasn't really gone much below that level uh, since that time. So what we're seeing here is that uh, Bitcoin once upon a time uh, was trading on a very low level. Uh, and at, at this point, uh, we can see the maturity of the market, how much these volumes have grown. Now, if we do see another spike like, uh, like we saw in 2017, um, you know, we're on this, uh, this assumption that there's a parabolic run happening and a massive leap forward in adoption. This could very easily happen uh, again like it's happened in the past where we see, okay, peer-to-peer uh, -peer volumes suddenly at, you know, 5 billion uh, and then come down re relaxation down to, you know, uh, half a billion or whatever it is at the time. Um, so I think that this is a very clear sign that people are using Bitcoin for its intended purpose, which is to transfer value, uh, store value, uh, and trade it peer-to-peer. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.